Hey all here, OS Reviews. In this video, we'll be taking a closer look at some of the differences of Android Go. And this isn't really a brand new mobile operating system, it's just a kind of branch of Android based on Oreo 8.1 at the moment. But it's a lighter version of the regular Android experience designed for low-end hardware, because if you try to slap a regular version of Android on specs like that, it would typically not work well at all, uh, just because Android is very resource intensive and definitely not as optimized as say iOS or Windows Phone in that regard to run well on low-end specs. So this is kind of Google's attempt to kind of bridge the gap between kind of low-end phones and high-end phones by making the software side of things still compatible and feel a little bit snappier. So let's take a closer look at the Android Go Edition experience here. Uh, first of all, because it is based on Android 8.1 Oreo, we do have all the regular commands from Oreo, such as long pressing on all the apps here to give us contextual menus for things like taking a look at additional settings without jumping directly into the app itself. So I can actually compose an email here just without having to go in. It's very similar to something like Force Touch on iOS, but on here, the screen itself isn't pressure sensitive, it's just long holding or ac will access additional menus for supported apps. Otherwise, it looks very much similar to a Google Pixel phone, which is one of the benefits of having Android Go Edition on a device. It runs and looks the way that Google intended it to, so you end up with an experience that is actually very smooth and uh, feels quite polished. So we have access to just a drag up gesture for your full list of applications. So now we can take a closer look at the differences. First of all, we no longer have something like a Google Now page, which gives you a view of, uh, say, you know, news feeds as well as uh, updates of things happening around you. Now we just have this simplified screen that basically takes you to a list of all the Google services, such as YouTube, Weather, Translate, for you to click through. And that's simply because uh, Android Go Edition, again, is meant for emerging markets. And in those places, data access might be very restricted. You may not always have access to Wi-Fi. You may not always have access to 3G or 4G. So you have to be more stringent on when updates are pulling through, so they kind of just got rid of the, you know, Google Now screen altogether. Now, we also don't have any more is access to the OK Google command. There's still access to Google Assistant, which you can access by long holding here. And whenever you long hold, you can still, you know, say things. The parsing of your text and the recognition of your speech is still as accurate as on any other smartphone. So there's no differences there. It's just you can't say something like, OK, Google, to automatically launch into it. And the reasoning here is also just to have a lighter version of Assistant and also to conserve on data because, again, you're not going to be always connected. Compared to the regular YouTube app, it misses out on a lot of these same gestures that maybe we've gotten used to. So for instance, if we tap on a video, it's not going to begin playing it immediately. Instead, we just get a quick 15-second preview, and then we can tap on a quality that we want to either play or download onto the phone. So before it plays it back, it just gives you a warning you know, whether you really want to proceed and use this much data to access this video or not. Also, if you have a 2x1 aspect ratio phone, this is something that I commented on in the review of this device, which is the Blackview A20. You, are, you aren't able to pinch into full screen, so there's still black bars on the left and the right. Uh, this is something that you can do with a regular version of YouTube. You can just pinch in, and for a phone that has a wider aspect ratio, it will just expand. But it's not on here because YouTube Go Edition, Android Go Edition phones are still predominantly using older aspect ratios like 16 by 9. And then Maps Go Edition also looks a, di a little different interface-wise. We have just a map of uh, kind of our nearby location here. We also have a few different icons for driving, taking by train or walking. Um, and we don't have the ability to download, I think, maps offline to the phone's memory compared to the regular version of uh, Google Maps where you can actually save onto the phone, temporary maps for different regions and locations. On here it's disabled, which is probably a good thing because the phone's memory is going to be so low that if you try to download all these maps, it's going to run out of storage really quickly. And if we launch into the Play Store, we'll see that we can also install some specific apps designed for Android Go Edition on the Feature tab section. So it notices that you're running on Android Go. Tapping on More, it gives you a few apps here that have been optimized, like Messenger Lite, Facebook Lite. But this list is obviously not very deep, just because uh, the majority of apps are still going to just be for regular Android. Not all of them have been optimized yet to run on this lighter version. One thing that you will notice, though, is that it actually shows you all the size of the, each of the downloads before you click on them. So for instance, this uh, app here takes up 5 megabytes. So you can actually see this before you go into the app itself. 
Now, taking a quick look at kind of system properties here, you can tell that indeed we are running on an Android Go Edition platform. So there's a differentiator under software that you can tell that it's not the regular version of Android. And one other kind of neat trick that you'll find on most Android Go Edition phones is the ability to background auto clean. So basically after a few seconds, the, you know, about five minutes after the phone's display is turned off, it will automatically clean off the RAM just to conserve on your resources and space. So for, for instance, right now we have quite a few you know, apps open, but because again, we only have one gig of RAM on here, not a lot, um, with this feature turned on, you know, after I've stopped using the phone for maybe more than five minutes or even longer, uh, I'll find that after opening it up that all the RAM has been cleared. So that's more or less it as far as our kind of just closer look at some of the differences between Android Go Edition and a regular version of Android. This really isn't meant to compete, I guess, uh, in a flagship level territory. It's more meant, again, for budget-oriented smartphones that are re already quite uh, low-end in terms of hardware and is now slightly more optimized so that it will start up faster and run faster for core features like Search, the browser, YouTube, and Gmail. So what do you, all of you guys think about Android Go? Do you think that it has a promising future or is it kind of a redundant use of resources from Google? Do you think that this is just an indicator that uh, you know Android and Google needs to do a better job of optimizing their resources from the first place as opposed to creating just a lighter version? So be sure to stay tuned for more coverage on uh, Android Go Edition as well as on Android Go Edition phones. But for now, that's been our video, a closer look at some of the differences as well as similarities between this light version of Android and a regular device. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.